Howdy folks. Let's go over the page object pattern. This isn't specific to WebDriver IO, but we will be using WebDriver IO to go over it. So every end-to-end -end test basically involves pages. Uh, so if you look at previously what we've done, we've had, let's say form authentication, Here, this, this is a page, this represents a page. So we had the login page, you have forgot password. This is a page. So it all represents a page. So a good practice to follow is the page object pattern. So what we do is we create a class for every single page. And what this will do is allow us to abstract everything about the page into that class. So what our, our actual test does is just call methods and getters from the class. And one big advantage to that is if our page ever changes, we can hopefully only have the page change the page object class and not every single test. So let's just dive right into it to see what this actually does. So what we let's do, let's convert one of our existing tests that we had, let's do the form authentication. Because what this does is verified we could log in and for our forgot password. So what we want to do is just, let's just convert this over to the page object. So we can actually get rid of this before each. And then before we get into too much, let's just convert this one thing this here to open the page. So, so every page object class will have an open method. And what that does is just open the page for that page object. So without writing the class yet, let's just do, so we're gonna test, right here we wanna test the login form. So what we wanna do is we wanna open up the form authentication page here. So we wanna open this. So let's, we haven't created this yet, but let's import um, a login class. We'll create this class in just a second. So now we can do login.open. And what that is gonna do is open this page here. So that essentially gets, can get rid of this whole line here. Um, all right, so then once you create a class, we'll, we'll convert the rest of this to the page object model. But this is the first thing, the open method. So let's create our login class. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a classes directory. How you architect and store your your tests and classes is kind of up to you and what your project does. Every project's going to be a little bit different, but for this, I'm just going to add a classes directory. And then I'm going to, let's, let's create the login class here. You'll see sometimes some people will, will call the, um, We'll name the classes login.page.js, which is perfectly acceptable. Kind of what, what suits you best. But so you might see this, which is kind of nice because you can distinguish it that it's a page class. But we're just going to name it login.js. All right, so we've got that. So let's start building our class. So let's class login extends page. So we're going to create this, this, this page class in just a sec. Pretty much every class you have, every page class you have is going to extend a base page class. And that base page class can be very simple for now. And we'll, we'll create that in just a second, but don't, don't worry about that. You just, you make the page, that page, this base page class once, then you really never have to think about it again. Um, the first thing we want to do is we, let's add our open method. Remember every, 
page class needs to have an open method. And then what this is going to do is call, we always do super dot open to call the parent open method. And this is going to be a path. So we're actually going to do login, I think. So the, the open, what we'll want to pass here is the path to, um, to our page. So you can see here we have login. We've already set this URL. Yeah. We've already set this, the base URL in our config file. So we don't need to do that. So we just need to pass the login. So I think we can actually just do that. So that's basically our open method. And sometimes depending on what your app is doing, you'll need to say, wait, once it's open, that will open the page, but maybe you have some Ajax that happens on the page and it has a loading bar. So you might need to do like, like wait for loading bar to not exist or something. So you may need to like do, I don't know, foo dot wait for exists undefined true so this will wait so you might just have like or let's let's name it ajax loading bar so you you're, the page might open but then you need to wait for the ajax loading bar to go away so that way when we call open we know that once we we call open that the page is fully loaded and we can start interacting with it. So I'm just gonna leave that there and comment it out because we don't need it for our case, but just keep that in mind. So let's now create our, our page, the base page class. So let's create that. So we have that. So let's just class page. And this is gonna depend on what you need for your application, but the, the main thing that we need is the open method, which accepts a path, which, which was the, the path here. That's what this is, this is the path. So we're gonna add that. So then all we really need to do here is use the global browser object. and call browser dot or not open URL. So just like we've done before, the URL just opens a page. So you can see how now we've abstracted all that out. So now all our open methods are abstracted. So let's export. So now we'll just export our, our page. So today that's all we're gonna do in the in the, in this actual page class. Um, depending on what your application does, you might need to add a lot more. You'll probably have logic in in this, maybe depending on what your application does. Um, but for the most part, that's what we need today. So let's do that. So now let's let's import that class into our page class. Import page from, we can do that. So now we have our page imported. So let's, let's see if this actually works. So the one thing we want to do is we need to export a login class here. So I am exporting it already instantiated. For the most part, you, you're gonna to wanna to always export your classes instantiated. Um, since every page object represents one class and there's really no state that changes on that, there's, there's not much reason to do, to export it just like that without it instantiated. You, you'll find as you go along, you'll find that this is, this is the right approach. It might seem a little different right now. And I was under the impression that it should not export instantiated, but after doing things numerous times um, and working on different projects, 
it makes sense to instantiate it because else you're going to be importing this login all the time. And then you're going to have to do like const login class equals new login. You'll see, you'll see doing that. You'll do this repeatedly over and over. And there's no, you're never setting the state or anything on this. So, so there's no, no point, um, to not instantiate it. All right. So we got that. So let's, let's comment this out. Let's see if this actually works. Let's just open our page just to verify. Let's comment all this out for now. And then. Let's just see if this runs. So we had that, we got that. I think that's all we need. Let's go up a directory. Um, and then form. Let's see if this works. Probably has some kind of typo somewhere. Yep. Um, Oh, dash dash spec. Oh, there you go. If you saw for a brief second, <clears throat> it did open the login page. So perfect. That's awesome. So now we've got our open method working. Sweet. So the next thing we want to do, let's, let's, let's just go along and convert this, this test to the page class. So let's get it rid of this. We don't need to do this anymore. So we're testing that you should not be able to log in with an invalid username. So the first thing we need to do is log in. Then we need to grab the username and password. So here's the username and password fields. We need to submit it. We need to wait for the flash. Then we need to check that the username is invalid since we input an invalid username. So you see how we've, some comment this. So you see how we've called username and password here. The problem with this approach is that we're going to have other tests probably or, or use this, the same selector in multiple places. So we'll just be copy and pasting the same exact selector all over the place. Um, and then maybe some developer changes that to like, just email maybe or, or user or user or changes the selector somewhere. So if they do that, we maybe we had 30 tests that, that use this selector. We would now have to go in and change this in 30 different test cases, which is not, not a good approach. So what we want to do is we want to abstract this out. Since, since this selector belongs to our login page, we want to abstract this out into our login class. And to do this, we're going to add a getter on the class. And if you haven't noticed, these are ES6 classes, the latest JavaScript. If you're using Node version, probably eight, you're, you're fine. I think six even, I think six supports it fine. But you should be on eight anyways, at least eight or above. Um, so you don't have to worry about Babel or anything if you don't want to. This, this will just work out of the box. So you see here that this is a method. This open function is a method. But here we want to add our username and password as getters. You can think of them as, as just those properties. So what we do to that is we do git prefix it, git space, and then let's call this username and let's do password. Username. So we just got that, and then we'll get the password. So perfect. You could, this is just how I formatted it. You might see things more like, uh, may look like this if you see it other places, but they're the, they're the same thing. Actually, I need to return, I need to return that selector. So now since, so we're returning the selector so we can actually chain, we can continue to chain off of it. And 
So now we've got our two selectors. So now anytime we need to use, interact with the username or password on this login page, all we have to do is, is start, is reference these getters to, to do that. So like I said, if they change this to, to email later on, all we have to do is change it right there and, and nowhere else, which is great. All right, so we got that. So now, since those are properties and not methods, we call them a little bit differently. See how we did login.open with the, the parentheses? To do the getters, all we do is do login, login.username dot add value. So you see how there's no parentheses here? It's because just it's just a property. So let's do our password. Login.password. And that's it. So that's the same as username dot add value. So those are the same same thing. These two here. But now this is uh, this is already looking a little bit cleaner. This, this is looking nice. So now we just do that. So just login username, password, boom. So let's let's test that out. Let's put a browser.pause so we can see that this is actually being filled in. Uh. All right, perfect. See, see how it's foo and then our password here. So that's that's working now. Beautiful. So let's let's uh, continue. So now we need to submit. So we're going to do the same thing. We have a selector here. We don't want to use this selector in our test. So if you get if you understanding the pattern that's coming is you pretty much don't want to ever use selectors inside of your test. You want to have the selectors abstracted out to the page classes. So let's copy this. So to submit, let's add a submit getter. Boom. That's all we need there. So we've got our submit. So let's let's convert that over. So login dot submit. All right, so now we have a flash here. Once again, let's store that in a getter. Let's just call it flash. All right, so now we have a flash in a getter. Let's convert that. Login dot flash. So to the error, you see how we duplicated, the, the flash was duplicated with the selectors. So now let's just do login flash. So you can see since, since we're returning it as a web driver object here, we have access to all those methods just like before. Get text, wait for displayed, add value, and so forth. So now we've converted this over to a page object. So let's see if it runs. And it works. So all we did was refactor our code and our tests stayed the same. So it worked. So that's great. The advantage is now everything is abstracted into this login class. So now let's let's create a 